Welcome to the gap. This is the gap. Yeah. They should have never gave you platform. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Get it. Get it. Yeah. What's good with y'all out there? I'm your host, Kamal. This is another episode of The Gap. Woo! Hey, man, I got the best audience out there. Even though some of y'all getting on my goddamn nerves, I still got the best audience out there. Give yourself a goddamn hand clap. Air horns. Hey, man, if the kids watching, hopefully they learning something. You feel me? Hey, man, for my tubers out there, YouTube been around since 2005. I don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the video or the channel booming. But I do need to tell y'all to sub and share. And hey, I made that comment and somebody on a tube was like, oh, I mean, what are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. Like, you got to tell people what to do because I don't understand what you mean. But damn it. Who fault is that? YouTube been around 05 and you hear everybody say the same slogan. The whole like, share, sub, da 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 God damn. Y'all just be saying shit just to say it. I'm gonna still give y'all a hand clap though, because even the shit talker that's part of my audience, I fuck with y'all too. Give yourself another hand clap. Name was Charlie, please. Well, child, please shut the f up. <laughs> nah, I keep typing, but I'm gonna still tell you shut the f up. Anyway, like I said, I need to tell y'all to sub and share. Sub and share for your boy. For my potters out there, I'm on Google Podcasts, I'm on Apple Podcasts, and I'm on SoundCloud. All you gotta do is either type in The Gap or Kamal Johnson NT. Bow and I'll pop right up. Look, I'd like to thank my sponsor, First Place Losers. The link to the shop going to be in the description below. Y'all go check out the garments. <sighs> Rocking one of them right now. Oh, it feels so soft on my skin. Jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, let's get right into it. You feel me? And we got to talk about this right here because this ain't being mentioned. And I know y'all been hearing about the employment wave. Oh, the employment wave. Unemployment's going down. Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 shit. Yeah, that's true. But guess what? Not for black men. All right? Black men are getting the shit end of the f***ing deal. We being left out of the employment wave. Golly. We get left out of everything. I don't say black people, but, I mean, black men are getting hit the hardest, all right? We getting hit like a motherfucker, like a goddamn boxer. Wow, we getting knocked, we getting our ass whooped when it comes to this employment stuff. Good golly. Holy Harriet. Yeah, man, but look, we getting left out of the employment wave. And June 2020, black male unemployment rose to 16%. What? Now, the reason because that is because, you know, COVID. Can I say COVID anymore? I didn't say the, the number, though. That we're going to call it the T-Virus. T-Virus 19 came around starting. A lot of people was unemployed, you feel me? But we got hit with the brunt of stuff. But it dropped, you feel me? Now, 20, like last time, February 2022, it dropped to 6.4%. But that's still double the amount of the white male counterpart. Jesus Christ. Which has always been happening. We always either been doubled or more than doubled when it comes to unemployment throughout the United States of America. Land of opportunity, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And when we get opportunity, we get underpaid. Oh my God. Underemployed. If y'all don't know what that is, Google it. Ask my bro Google. He know all the answers, man. Ask my one bro. He know all the damn answers. But he might be racist. What? <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, uh, six point four percent. You feel me? That's still that's still pretty high. Which the unemployment rate as of now is uh, like I said, they're double. So the unemployment rate is three point two percent, which leaves that if we were the same unemployment rate as our white counterparts, that would leave roughly four hundred and sixty thousand black. 
black men employed. Damn! Damn! All right? And now you got to take into context. If we are 12 to 13% of the population, right? And 400,000 black men should be employed. That's a big number within our respective population compared to white America where white males well, you know, white America, white people were probably like 40 plus percent. Last time I checked, told me white men, maybe 22, 23 And I said 13% of black people. So you got to imagine half of that is probably, you know, seven point something. You know what I mean? Maybe 6.5%. And then 6.5 of that, you feel me? We 6.4% unemployed. That's a big number of black men not getting employed. Jesus Christ. Man, I, back then I could be considered one of them. I'm married for a full year straight. Look it. I got fired from my last job. Only job I ever got fired from, right? For, for a full year, Monday through Friday, I was sending out resumes for a full year year when i had kamal johnson on my resume no callbacks nothing i got a nice email saying oh i was overqualified for some things but that was bull malarkey that just shut out completely right so then i also when i changed my name to k johnson it's a gym for y'all you know what i mean don't put your ethnic name message you, know I mean? you got one you just put the if you got an ethnic name just put your your first initial all right when i put k johnson I was getting hit backs, you know, got a couple interviews here and there, but still didn't get employed. You feel me? Even though I was qualified for the jobs and stuff like that. I had to create my own damn employment. That's why, you know, even though I, I love doing what I'm doing now, but that's why I kind of got into videography, photography, and now I'm doing the YouTube podcast. Because I know I'm, I'm great at this shit. You feel me? But I had to create my own damn employment. Because I'll shut out the damn market. And a lot of black men deal with this. A lot. And what if the black men that ain't trying to do stuff like this? You feel me? Where they got to sit around and be Giggity. broke? Because the people don't want to hire them? So we getting shut out of being... So we can economically recover? Is that what's happening? Is that what, what's going on? Because they want to talk about this employment wave and being like, yo, you know, jobs are coming back. People are getting employed and people are getting this and that. But they ain't talking about this where like, yo, black men really not getting employed out here. We still get, or we are employed, you know what I mean? Every dollar white man get, 75 cent go to the black man. What? So when we are employed, we underemployed. And that happened to me too. I worked at jobs. I come in the same as somebody else, which was white. And I'll be like, white man? No, a white woman getting paid more than me. Jesus Christ. There have been jobs I've been at, and like, y'all are like, how do you get the information? Because I talk to people. I'm personable. People like to indulge information on me. They love just opening up to me. And I figure this shit out, and I'm like, damn, I'm underemployed. And what I do? I stick it out for a little bit till I find the next job, and I'll be like, fuck y'all, suck my dick, I'm out of here. Don't just quit, quit right away. Nah. Uh, 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 uh. Message. Have another plan. Then tell them to suck your dick, I'm out of here. <laughs> Shit. I know emotionally, you know, you know what I mean? We want to be like, nah, fuck that nigga ain't paying me enough. They underpaying me. Well, you want to quit right away, but no. Subside the emotions. Get on your game. And plan. But yeah, man, this shit is true, bro. And this is this is such bullshit. It's like it is hard for black men to participate in economic recovery when we are unemployed double the amount, and when we are employed, we are underemployed. Man, y'all don't want to talk about this though. I don't want to keep it on silent. No, I'm a, I'm gonna raise the issue. I'm speaking loud. And I ain't about to say proud about it, because I ain't proud about this shit. This is horse shit. And for you dumb motherfuckers out there that be like, 
What is systematic racism? This! This is systematic racism. This is a system that is imposing racist views and keeping us economically underprivileged. You know what I gotta say about that? Fuck you motherfuckers. Fuck y'all. God damn. But I wanted to shed light on this because I'm tired of seeing and hearing and talking people talk about the unemployment, the, I mean the employment wave and like, yeah, like everybody getting jobs or there's jobs out there and people not applying. Uh, well, it looks like it's bullshit because it feel like black men are applying. We're not getting the goddamn jobs. Message. And I don't want to hear nothing about that shit about, well, what about the qualifications and what about this and what about that? Shut that bull malarkey up. Come on, it's time we qualify. Or like I previously said, we overqualify. Well, we overqualify, right? Why wouldn't you point us in the right direction for those type of jobs we do qualify for? Because you're trying to keep us out of the economic <laughs> recovery. <laughs> you motherfucker. And I know some dumb motherfucker out there, they're going to be like, well, it's a wave. You know, black people don't know how to swim and shit. But <laughs> just shut the hell up. We talk about an economic wave. We ain't talking about a tsunami. <laughs> but, uh, hey, I don't know, man. It, I don't know how to swim. But I mean, a lot of black people that know how to swim. That stereotype is being debunked. You feel me? But, yeah, at the end of the day, man, we, we need this number to go down. We need corporations to either hire us or... What I really want and what I did is we need to create our own economic system and create jobs for ourselves and employ our own black people. That is the solution. Yeah. Asian people do it. <laughs> Kudos to y'all. But we need from the motherfucking government, we need Gore. Rele reliefs and grants and stuff, you feel me? Because that's what they got back in the day and even now. Now we want our share. You feel me? Reparations, motherfuckers. <laughs> hey, my sources I got from Forbes and life experiences. I really went through the ringer. And there's a bunch of black men out there that go through the ringer like I did. Bullshit, bro. Bullshit. Hmm. Employment wave my ass. Them waves are terrible straight pooty <laughs> all right you know what segment we about to get into now we about to get into the sad Seven. segment oh snap and i had to talk about this because you know uh I, I, she part of the unemployment now too you feel me and this this motherfucker doco series right here bad vegan fame fraud fugitives on netflix Oh my goodness. Yeah, her ass got unemployed after swindling people out of hella money. And all right, let me give you the stats before I give you my in, in the plot line before I give you my spill on the things. IMDb gave it 5.8 and Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 95%. I agree more with IMDb because sometimes I was confused off this documentary and at times I was just like, what the hell? What? What, what the hell is going on? So, to Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, frick them. You feel me? And the people gave it a 63%. I agree more with the people. I'm like, this doco series, the way they were telling the storyline at times and certain things, it, it kind of left some confusion. And at the same time, I was like, what? Really? All right. <laughs> all right. There's a lot of, all right. You feel me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is directed by Chris Smith. Uh, like I said, this was a doco series, and it was about a vegan restaurant, which was the owner was Sarma Malaganalalis, or however you say her goddamn name, and she basically illegally transferred money to her husband, uh, because he told her that. He can make her and her dog immortal? What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. I'm 
Okay. Couple things. So, first thing, let me get the serious thing out the way. We have to talk about mental illness because clearly this woman had a mental illness. If somebody could tell her that they can make her immortal, but you got to give me money to do the shit. So, that it, she had a mental illness going on. She was, like, something was wrong there, okay? Like, I, but, uh, an, or is it mental illness? They never disclosed it, but I would feel somebody is mentally ill if somebody tells you they can hit you with some magic and make you immortal and your dog. I don't know. But the second thing I had to think of is, um... What is up with, like, white women getting fooled by people tell men, men that they think is attractive, telling them that, yo, I can hit you with some immortality and magic spells, and we are here, we are destined to be together if you give me all your goddamn money. What? How is it that you're able to trick white women? And I'm only saying white women because that's what they expose them. But it, it, you probably could trick a lot of women by just hitting them with this divine intervention, magic, Harry Potter, goddamn spell shit. Jesus Christ. I don't understand it. He was just gaming her up, telling her, we are meant to be together. This is how it's supposed to be. I can make you. And you got to always throw in the dog. You have to throw in the dog because if you don't throw in the dog, then it ain't going to work. But if you make her and the dog immortal. Oh, and another thing. You have to say you have some type of enemies. That's what Burrow was saying. He was like, I'm in some secret CIA agent shit and enemies over here, enemies to the left, enemies to the right, up, down, all around. It's like, bruh, really? And they fall for it. What? Essentially, she was had one of the best vegan, well, two of them, but one they really put spot on, the, the uh, Lucky Duck. Best vegan goddamn restaurant in New York. Booming out this atmosphere. And she met this guy who eventually became her husband. But a lot of people didn't see that, like, they didn't really fit. And, and like, they didn't really have too many too much chemistry. But they didn't know that this nigga was a wizard. He hit her with the magic. Hit her with the magic stick. <laughs> That's what nobody is saying. That's what it was. It was the magic stick. What? If you get my drift. Jesus Christ. He hit her with that. Hazima. Hadugan. Hadugan. Oh my God. He Hadugan that poon. <sighs> but yeah. Then he started being like. He, been, he was being very like aggressive. And at the end of the day. He was being very emotionally abusive. But it was like. At the end of the day, he didn't, he couldn't really get caught up for nothing because she authorized everything. And then she started really swindling investors. She did a Ponzi scheme. She basically told these investors, she was like, oh, I could get the money, this, you know, the shop opened this way. We brought in a lot of money. And she used that investor money and also the money she's supposed to pay her employees and cut them checks and shit like that. And she just, Wired it to her husband. And her husband was a goddamn gambler. And he gambled all the money away. And then they went off and ran ran off and was all through cross country and going through certain goddamn casinos. And he kept telling her, like, I'm going to give you the magic. Wait on it, woman. I'm going to make you immortal. You don't believe me? We have to get it this to this entity so we could be immortal and live forever. And I'm like, oh, my God, bruh. <laughs> oh, what the hell? People out there, you can never be immortal. Don't believe the hype. <sighs> yeah. But yeah, he, tri he did that trickery. And then like, but after a while, I was thinking, I was like, yo, like, looking at this doctor, series, I was like, is she in on it? Like, what the hell is going on? And is it is it something about being veganism where you have to believe in this goddamn magic trickery shit? A lot of vegans I talk to, they they kind of sound like how she was in belief. Well, she ain't anymore. She she said, F vegan, I'm about to start eating meat again. 
still like this vegan shit. I'm out of here. Nah, she kept being vegan and stuff, but it, it's something about people that are vegan at times that they believe a lot of this hocus pocus shit. And that's what he hit her with. And I'm just like, God damn, like, and at the end of the day, it's like, you kind of want to feel sorry for her, but then you don't. Because she made all these goddamn millions. She made all this Giggity. money. She actually was financially well off from her parents and all that ordeal. And she got hit with the tomfoolery. Like love. Validation. Damn. Love don't cost a thing. Well, that's bullshit. Because it cost her millions. Message. And it was just like, it's it's like, what make you not feel bad for is like, she f <laughs> over her damn employees. One motherfucker had three kids and a wife and a family and he couldn't pay for his own and got evicted. Jesus Christ. Like, that's what I'm saying, bro. It's like, it's hard to feel bad for it, but you do feel bad for it because you heard the call. She most definitely was getting emotionally abused. Like a motherfucker, but I mean, I think she had a mental problem, but I can't tell. I don't know, man. It's weird, man. These rich white women get hit with the hocus pocus, magicry. I don't even know if that's a word, but we gonna use it. Harry Potter, bull malarkey lines, and they fall for it and give their money up. And we know the real reason. Why they give their money up? Because the magic stick. But nobody wants to talk about that. And at the very end, bro, I didn't even do no goddamn time. I think he did, I think he did like four months and he had probation. She went to jail, federal prison for like two years. Didn't get no restitution, none of her money back. Her life is ruined. She in debt like Hundreds of hundreds of millions of dollars. Hey, they need to have a Forbes section of niggas that's in total debt. They have the richest, excuse me, sorry. They have the richest people, but they should have the, the brokest of the brokest motherfuckers. That'd be crazy. Damn. Yeah, man. That was the end of this Daco series, bro. And it's just like, <sighs> Bro, at the end of the day, man. Yeah, that's her husband name. Anthony Strages. He his last name sounded like he on some bullshit. God damn. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh man, bro. But yeah, man, like at the at the end of the doco, like, I have to put in the pieces together. I don't think she was in on the fraud. I think she got really defrauded. And, like, she was dealing with a lot of public humiliation, a lot of public shame. And, like, at one spectrum, you feel bad for her, but at the other, you really don't. And it's just like, damn, bro. She just got fucked over, bro. Man, women out there, white women out there, if you listen to this, Stop. But make sure the nigga does a magic trick first or something before you get fooled with the shit. I don't know. Make sure he get fire out his hands or he goddamn does some shit like how Jubilee did in X Men and fireworks come out his fucking hands or something or he floats or levitates or stretches limbs. Make sure some type of magic happens before you get kicked with this tomfoolery and start giving up your money. Goddamn, what? Actually, invest in me. At least I'm doing something. All right, I'm going to start. I'm going to put a GoFundMe account and be like, I am a magician and I will make sure your money reappear in your account within a certain amount of time. Hell, you might have even more money. Kapayal. Alakazam. Money in the account, ma'am. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Once again, man, this was a bad vegan, fame, fraud, fugitives on Netflix. Whew, goddamn Sharma.
I just, man, get the f out of here. This is why I can't be a goddamn vegan. It's too much magic trickery shit going on. <laughs> anyway, oh, snaps. Y'all know what time it is. It is meme time. Ooh and I got some juicy memes for y'all. Always got juicy memes for y'all. But I'm going to keep saying it. In today's memes, we got... We did bad vegan, and we had to do a bad vegan meme. And right here, it has Sarma in the picture. And she's looking like, damn, I can't believe I got tricked by this fat motherfucker here. Oh, yeah, by the way, the motherfucker's kind of husky, fat, fat as fuck. Now, he wasn't fat as fuck, but he was a bigger man. And it reads, Anthony Stranges. I make you and your dog immortal. Me. Where did you graduate from? Hogwarts? <laughs> pound, bad vegan, pound, bad vegan Netflix. Yeah, bro, was he Dumbledore? What? Nigga didn't even look like Dumbledore if you got hit with the Dumbledore lines. Oh. <laughs> I hit with the Dumbledore. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, man, like this some old Harry Potter shit, bro. What the f man? At least play Quibbitch. Jeez. Alright, so we talked about black men getting left out of the employment wave. So I had to come with an employment oh no an unemployment meme. Cause we are high in the unemployment category. And he got the, bro, you know the meme where, bro, the black dude, he had a point at his uh, brain, the thinking shit. He like, yeah, if you do this, this won't happen. Hmm. And it reads, can't lose your job if you're unemployed. What? I mean, he right. He got a point there. That's what they thinking. That, so that's what they thinking. They like, you know what? <laughs> they can't say they lose their job if we never employ their ass. That's what the system thinking. The system makers. The system makers. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, man. You feel me? I just did my taxes. So this meme reminded me of me doing my damn taxes right now. And it has a Dr. Evil. And he's like, ah! <laughs> and it reads, me. I like to learn how to do my taxes. Public school. Molten Rock is called Magma. <laughs> yeah. They're teaching you about bullshit and not what applies in the real world. Like taxes. And yes, I owed the year in taxes. Uncle Sam was like, I'm getting my shit, nigga. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, in public school, they don't teach you that. They want to teach you about motherfucking rocks. Lava. Sure. And platonic platonic uh plate people out there they probably what the f is a platonic plate i never ate off of one of those before god damn it that's where fucking shit rubbed together and earthquakes happen people i know surprisingly i still know this stuff yeah taxes they should have taught us how to do that so you won't get hit by the fucking mob aka i r s message internal revenue services they are the mob they gonna get their money one way or another it ain't gonna digitally break your goddamn legs or physically jesus christ the, the choice is yours <laughs> ow Wee! all right there you feel me hey man like i said i got the best audience out there well some of y'all being little bastards you feel me but i appreciate y'all comments anyway give yourself a goddamn hand clap you feel me yeah! And the kids are fing learning. I love it, you feel me? Hey, I like to thank my sponsor, First Place Losers. The link to the shop gonna be in the description below. Y'all go check that out. For my tubers out there, YouTube been around since 2005. I don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the video or the channel booming. Especially, child, please! Use your goddamn critical thinking. Alakazam, motherfuckers! Yeah, I do need to tell y'all to sub and share. Jeez, sub and share for your boy. Woo!
For my potters out there, though, I'm on Apple Podcasts, I'm on Google Podcasts, and I'm on SoundCloud. All you got to do is type in either The Gap or Kamal Johnson ENT. Bow and I'll pop right up. Whew. Man. On that note, I'm out of here. Peace out. Hey, man, I got to start learning my goddamn magic. I, I need an angel investor. Shit. You feel me? The magic stick. The magic stick. <laughs> This was good. This was good. Ooh, yeah.